This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good night, Shabbos Shabbos Shabbos. So I want to share with you, we know that Parshas Vayichi enjoys a feature that no other Parsha enjoys. And that is, it's not Stuma, it's completely Stuma. There are other Parshas that are Stuma, for example, Vayetze. However, other Parshas that are Stuma still have nine oisios of space between the end of the Parsha and the beginning of the new one. But not so Vayichi. Vayichi is Sosom Lagamri. Sosom Lagamri means the no- there's not more than one letter of space between the end of Ayigash and the beginning of Ayichi to the point where the Maral asks, well, if there's no space, so who even says it's a new Parsha? Maybe it's one long Parsha of Ayigash Vayichi and he has no alternative but to say that uh, it's just the Kabbalah from Ezra HaSoifer that there are two different Parshas. But there is no indication at all from the Sefer Torah that it's even a new Pasuk. I mean, this week by the Kriya Satoira, every time we lay in Vayichi, the Bakar could never find it. Now the question is, why is it a Parsha Stuma? That's Kasha Rashi, Lama Parsha Zu, Sesuma. And Rashi says in the second answer, Bikesh Lagalai Sesaketz, Labanov, Venista Mimenu. Yaakov wanted to reveal when Mashiach was coming, and it was hidden from him. So the, the Parsha sealed... That indicates that the time of the Geula was hidden from Yaakov Avinu. Rabbeinu B'chayi quotes an astounding medrash. Rabbeinu B'chayi says, the medrash says, Yaakov Avinu was about to reveal when Mashiach was coming to his children, and the reason is because he looked at the names of his children, and he saw in Ruvain there's an Aleph and a Bez, and in God there's a Gimel and a Dalit, and in Yehuda there's a Hey and a Vav, and in Zavulan there's a Zayin, and, and in um, there's no Ches and Tes. Oh, they have no Chet! So I have to tell them when the kates will be. And as he's about to tell them when the kates, he says, oh, but they don't have a kufar or tzadi either, never mind. They don't have the kates in their names, so never mind. So it's a medrash plea. What does the medrash mean? That Yaakov, first he saw there was no ches and tes. And he said, okay, I'll tell them the kates. And then he realized there's no kuf and tzadi. I mean, may kara my savar or levasayf my savar. The moment he realized there's no ches and tes, he should have seen immediately there's no kuf and tzadi. Like, what was the hesitation over there? So the Chassam Soifer says an incredible pshat. An incredible pshat of Rabbeinu B'chayi. Now we know the Chassam Soifer has many svarim on Chumash. Torah as Moshe, Chassam Soifer ala Torah. Drash as Chassam Soifer. But so to speak, the most uh, creative and what's considered the most original are the Chidushim the Chassam Soifer had in his youth. In the Sefer, Jeroshim ba'agadoy to the Chassam Soifer. It's, it's not an easy Sefer to get. And he says as follows. Even though he knew originally there was no Kuf and Sadi in the name of the Shvatim, but the unification and the entity of the Shvatim coming together with Yosef was a kibbutz of Klal Yitzrael, and that entity provided the Kuf and the Tzadi. In fact, the Beis Yosef says that when uh, Yosef was reunited with the brothers, that's when they were Masaki in the Bracha, Mekabetz Nidche Amo Yisrael. So even though there's no kuf and the tzadi in their name, Yaakov says, a beautiful achdos. He sees them coming together, and that achdos was a kibbutz that provides the kuf and the tzadi, yeah? But what happened? Let me tell you what happened. Yaakov Avinu never knew what happened to Yosef. He thought he was ripped apart by a wild animal. Now that he sees him at Shrayim, he figured he must have been kidnapped. He never chalumped that the brothers and Yosef had such... Um, discord that the brothers couldn't stand him so much and hated him that they sold him. He never knew. And God would have liked to tell him, but God was in Cherem. They excommunicated. They said, God, you're in Cherem if you tell him. So Hashem had to abide by the Cherem. But in Yaakov's last moments, laying there on his deathbed, he finally had a nevuah that the brothers made Yosef's life miserable. Yaakov for the first time saw the discord of the brothers and the Mechiras Yosef, and he realized that this artificial unity that he imagined was real was all fake. And there was no Achdos in Klal Yisrael. And because there was no Achdos, there was no Kibbutz, and there was no Kibbutz, there's no Kuf and Sadi. Meaning, symbolically, if there's no Achdos, then there's no possibility for the Ketz. That's, says the Chassam Sarefer, the Pshad in Rabbeinu B'chai, and this is the reason why it's a Parsha Sesuma, because Yaakov Avinu saw that we were not B'kibot Achas, and therefore the Geula was, so to speak, hidden from him. 
Rav Tzadik HaKoyin, in the beginning of the Pre Tzadik on Parshas Vayichi, says that while all the Perushim of the Mepharshim on why it's a Parsha Sasuma are MS, but there is a very, very deep reason why this week's Parsha is a Parsha Sasum. The Pre Tzadik says as follows, Parshas Vayichi and Parsha Shmois are a great mystery. Klai Yisrael, they're in Eretz Yisrael. They're in our ancestral homeland. You ever hear of Eretz Yisrael? Anybody here ever hear of the country Eretz Yisrael? That's the country God promised Abraham. Yeah? The Holy Land. The Holy Land, as they say. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's where we're supposed to be. So Avram's there. So he has one kid. Yitzchak's there. He has two kids. What's with Klai Yisrael? Yeah, nothing. No, they're a little family. So they're not really having that much Hatzlacha in Eretz Yisrael. Oh, where do they have to go? Mitzrayim, Ervas Haaretz, Memtesh Tuma, the land of black magic, the land of Arias. And all of a sudden, Klai so explode and they have tremendous Hatzlacha. Because someone tried to explain to me what in the world is going on here. In Eretz Yisrael, Klai Yisrael has no Hatzlacha. They go to Mitzrayim, they go to San Francisco, and all of a sudden they blossom into, you know, one of the greatest nations in history. How does that make any sense? Klal Yisrael have such Hatzlacha in Mitzrayim and on Eretz Yisrael? Says Reb Tzadik HaKoyin, Parshazu Susuma. This is one of the great mysteries of world history. Why it is that Klal Yisrael seem to have Hatzlacha in the most far out places, in the places you at least think that Klal Yisrael would ever be Matzliach. He says, Heim in Yonim, Susumim v'ne'elamim misechel ha'adam lahavinam. How is it that what prepared Klal Yisrael to be Mekabel the Torah? Sitting in Yerushalayim al Taras HaKodesh? Sitting in Bnei Brak? No. What prepared Klal Yisrael for the greatest rendezvous with God was being in Egypt for 210 years. And therefore, Rabbi Tzadik says, this should give us all hope in the Galas, thinking, how in the world will we ever be elevated to the Madregos that are necessary for the Gula Achroino? You should know that Nistara Darki Hashem, God's ways are very mysterious. And the same way, somehow, the Hatzlacha of Klal Yisrael came from being in Egypt, the future Hatzlacha of Klal Yisrael will come. We don't know how, we don't know in what generation, even Bedar Ikvasa, the Mashiach, even sometimes being in places which uh, one would least expect. This is why it's Parsha Susuma, meaning the concept of what ultimately will bring about uh, success for the Jewish people is not something that um, we're able to fathom. And this is a deeper meaning of Parsha Susuma. Rabbi Yisai, have a good Shabbos. Okay, we're gonna- You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.